I just wanted to jump in with a quick word about this episode. I recorded this episode before the COVID-19 outbreak was spread across the country. And I wasn't intending on releasing this episode yet. I had a few others planned for before this one. But I think right now, strength is absolutely what every birthing person needs right now. So I brought this episode up because some of the information in here is more important now than ever, given the changes that we're seeing in hospital policy from day to day. I wish I could provide you with more information about what to expect if you are birthing at a hospital, but at this point, it is just changing from day to day. So the best thing that you can be doing for yourself right now is to boost your physical and your mental strength so you go into your birth as prepared as possible with the communication techniques that you need to help you get all of the information that you need. We don't know what's going to happen in the next several weeks or months if you're listening to this podcast when it's released, which will be March 24th of 2020, but you will always need enough strength, enough physical strength, enough mental strength. That part isn't going to change, and now you may just need it more than ever. So I hope this episode helps you build up the mental and physical strength that you and your partner need in these coming weeks and these coming months as we face so much uncertainty from day to day. All right, that's all I have. I'll let you get to the episode. There is no question that pregnancy and birth will test your strength in many, many ways. So today we're exploring the many ways that you and your partner experience and exhibit strength in pregnancy, in birth, and beyond. We will also explore whether it's possible to be too strong, and then I'll share some tips that you can use to improve your strength for your own pregnancy, your birth, and your postpartum recovery. Imagine walking into your birth room so confident your birth team asks not how, but if they can help you. Imagine transforming the anxiety, the worry, and the uncertainty that you have about your birth right now into the confidence and knowledge that will end everyone's questions about your natural birth and even have them asking you how you did it. Are you ready to learn how you can stop imagining your wonderful birth and start preparing to experience it? Then you are in the right place. I'm Tristan, the creator of the Natural Birth Compass online childbirth education program, and I'm coming to your ears to put notions into your brain, to spark new ideas that become a thought pattern, a thought pattern that empowers you to take control of your pregnancy, your birth, and your life as a parent. My perspective on birth as a childbirth educator has been shaped by my training in Eastern medicine, a deep study of Chinese philosophy, and a lot of observation of the natural world. So grab your mug, fill it with your favorite tea, and let's begin your journey to birth. What are the many ways that strength shows up in the birth room? For the person giving birth, you're going through one of the biggest transformations of your life. No one comes through birth unchanged. And when it goes well, and you stay present with your birth, and you stay in your own control, Even if things don't go exactly as you planned, this transformation should make you stronger. It should make you feel powerful. When you meet your baby face-to-face for the first time, you should have the feeling that you can do anything. You can climb mountains. If you don't feel that way, then something went wrong in your birth room. Either you lost control of your birth, or medications interacted with your natural hormone flow, or maybe you labored into exhaustion because you didn't have the guidance on how to rest properly during labor. Many, many things can be responsible for not having that feeling of feeling powerful, of feeling strong, of feeling like you can climb mountains after birth. And then we have the birth partner. For the birth partner, strength comes out as the confidence that they can support their laboring partner, that they understand their partner's needs so well, they can identify them before anyone else in the room. When a birth partner can connect with the laboring mother in this way and directly see the impact of their support, they feel strong and protective of the birth space and the birth experience. This level of confidence is not something that we see in many birth partners today because many of them come to the birth room with little to no preparation of how to actually support their laboring mom. They might know the basics from their classes like support techniques and ice chips, 
But when it comes time to act in the moment or to be the voice that she might need or to anticipate her needs, they can feel at a loss to help. This position of feeling ill-equipped to support birth can leave the birth partner feeling disempowered, weak, and sometimes even scared. So here are the two keys to mental strength in the birth room. One is communication, and the second is being prepared for the birth process. Being prepared for how different birth can look from what you learn in classes, what you see on videos, what you read in the books. And we covered communication in the first episode of this podcast, so I'm not going to cover it today. You can go back and listen to episode one to get a deep dive into communication because it's one of the most important aspects needed to feel strong in birth. Now, being prepared for birth, well, that's what childbirth education is all about. The thing about childbirth education is it's a little bit like college. Remember when you were in college and they encouraged you to get a well-rounded education by requiring you to take a handful of credits from specific types of classes that were outside of your major? Taking your standard childbirth class and reading the standard books, it's probably not going to give you a well-rounded perspective on birth. It will teach you what normal birth looks like, but it won't prepare you for what your birth might look like. For that, it requires learning about yourself, your specific style of communication, the support needs that you are going to need for your birth, and an understanding of how you relate to your exterior world on a day-to-day basis. Now, this is one of the purposes of this entire podcast, to help you find and see new perspectives and learn techniques to gain insights about yourself and about the nature of birth and how you can use those things to improve your birth experience. Now that brings us to physical strength. Today, we're seeing a broad spectrum in regard to prenatal fitness recommendations. On one end, it seems more and more pregnant women concentrate on physical fitness and strength during their pregnancy. And they're doing this for their prenatal health, as a means to prepare for their birth, and to improve their postpartum recovery. But there are also a large number of women who are told they should not work out at all or very minimally during pregnancy, that it can be dangerous to the health of their pregnancy. Why is there this disjoint in the advice regarding exercise out there? Well, I think it's because our understanding of prenatal health and what women can and should do in pregnancy is going through a transition phase. And like any transition, the messages about what is right and what is wrong are going to be confusing. The other reason is that the level and types of exercise appropriate for pregnancy will vary from person to person, depending on their constitution, their previous exercise experience, their health status, and of course, the health of the pregnancy. In most cases, for healthy people experiencing a healthy pregnancy, a moderate amount of exercise is going to benefit you. If your care provider recommends that you cut back on your exercise once you are pregnant, but you feel that you really want to continue, you can and should consult with a prenatal fitness expert who can help guide you on the correct exercise routine for you. And then also listen to your body. If it feels too uncomfortable or causes pain that is worrying you, then stop immediately. But if you're feeling good with your current level of exercise, it will benefit your pregnancy and your baby and your labor preparation. That being said, there is a boundary to being overfit. And I can't help but notice the correlation between C-sections and those who are doing more extreme workouts during pregnancy. Now, in most cases, these are professional athletes and fitness instructors who are doing an intense amount of exercise, whereas most pregnant women, most of you listening, aren't going to be working out at these levels. But as these pregnant fitness professionals or extreme fitness women become more prominent in the headlines, it's important to point out that over-exercising for some women can be just as impactful as far as increasing the risk of birth interventions and C-sections as being too sedentary. This is because of nutrient imbalances or injuries from not understanding how to work out with their changing body or over-tightening their core and their pelvic floor and simply from being in a state of physical stress, that fight-or-flight state that exercise can cause, too much of the time. Being in this overtight, overstressed state can interfere with the softening and ripening of the cervix in the weeks leading to birth, 
And an over-tightened pelvic floor can make the pushing stage of labor more difficult. It can lengthen the time of the pushing stage and put you at more risk of interventions like forceps, vacuum extractions, or episiotomy. Oh boy, now I told you that some exercise is good, but too much is too much. And now you're probably thinking, but how much is good and how much is too much? Well, it depends on you. I know that's not helpful. Don't worry. I'm going to help you assess yourself a little bit more so you can get a better idea of how to approach your exercise routine. First, you have to be comfortable with the exercise that you're choosing, comfortable mentally and comfortable physically. Now, I'm not saying you can't continue to push yourself outside of your normal boundaries in order to continue to improve your physical fitness. In a healthy pregnancy, you can increase your fitness level. You can push those boundaries. You just don't want to push yourself to pain and certainly not to injury. If you were not previously exercising regularly, you can start in pregnancy, but work it in slowly. Walking, yoga, or swimming, these are great places to start. And this will allow you to gently get used to moving your body during the changes that are happening in your pregnancy. If you are already exercising before pregnancy, unless there's a medical reason, most people will be able to continue doing what they were doing before, especially in the first half of pregnancy. As the pregnancy progresses, you will want to pay particular attention to a few areas. One of the areas of particular importance during pregnancy is the fact that your joints are going to be more mobile, both during and even in the early postpartum months, because of your hormones. And this can make your joints more susceptible to injury. So you do want to have special awareness of not overstretching, especially your hips, your low back, and your pelvis. A second area to have extra awareness in your pregnancy is your core, and being mindful of supporting your core properly to reduce your susceptibility to diastasis recti, which is the separation of the abdominal muscles where they meet at the midline. This comes by being aware of the three different layers of your abdominal muscles, especially the innermost layer, which we call the transversus abdominis, or the TVA for short. You can think of this muscle group as the corset that holds your stomach in place. When it's strong, it keeps your abdominal region firm and it will hold everything in place. Accessing the TVA is one of the keys to supporting a strong core all the time, but especially during pregnancy. How do you do that? You can do it simply by breathing correctly. I plan to have a future episode that focuses on just breathing more in depth, but for now to get started, try placing your middle finger of either hand on your belly button. Then place your first finger just above your belly button and your third finger just below it. Now take a breath. Do you feel your fingers being pushed out? If not, then chances are you're not using your diaphragm or your core for your breath. And this is a missed opportunity to improve your core strength, improve your breath work, and actually even de-stress your body a bit. If you're having trouble bringing your breath all the way down to your belly, try it laying down either on your back or your side, whichever's more comfortable, and focus on bringing your breath down all the way to your belly button, all the way to your baby. The more you practice this, the more you'll be able to use your core to control your breathing. And this will be a tremendous boost to your strength in later pregnancy and in birth. And while we're on the topic of breath and exercise, the third thing that I want you to be aware of is feeling comfortable with your respiration during your workouts. Your oxygen needs are going to increase in pregnancy to support your growing baby, and that means your blood volume will change throughout your pregnancy too. You may notice that there are times in your pregnancy where your respiration may feel more restricted or more difficult, and this might affect your normal ability to work out. Usually this only lasts a few days as your body adjusts to the increasing needs of your baby, so if you feel that you're short of breath or if your muscles are burning more than usual during your workout, It might be a sign that you need a few days of rest or at least lower intensity workouts until your body stabilizes to another one of the many changes that happen during pregnancy. So that brings me to our key points about strength for today. First, strength in the birth room comes from being prepared and having communication tools. Remember, you can go back to episode one for my deep dive into communication and keep learning about birth from a variety of perspectives because there is not one way that birth happens. Continue listening to this podcast for more on being prepared overall. And then we have physical strength. 
Pregnancy is a great time to be increasing your physical strength to help you prepare for a healthy late pregnancy, a strong birth, an efficient postpartum recovery, and of course, the upcoming years of keeping up with a toddler. That's a workout routine all in itself. Those of you who already have toddlers, you know what I mean. Just be conscientious of your ever flexible joints, your core and pelvic stability, and changes in your oxygenation and blood volume. If you need help coordinating an exercise routine for yourself, find an expert in prenatal fitness to make sure you stay healthy, fit, and safe. Remember, it's okay to exercise in pregnancy as long as you are doing it correctly. Thank you for listening and being open to new perspectives as we spent this time together. As always, let me know how I can support your journey. If you have topics you want to hear about, guests you'd like to hear from, questions or comments to share, let me know about it all. This podcast is always transforming and you can help shape it into something that helps thousands of families have the best pregnancy, birth and transition into parenthood possible by leaving a comment or a review so they can find us or sharing this podcast with others in your life who will benefit from our discussions. Find me on the socials at Natural Birth Compass or email me at info at naturalbirthcompass.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. Wishing you a wonderful journey to birth. See you next time.